Hello gang, Professor McElroy here at 6.30. So let's get started. Uh, digital illustration, February 2022, GRA 2156. Uh, we're into learning module three. Uh, we kind of tackled the first two learning modules in the first two weeks, which I would consider like kind of basic. And then maybe like now moving into a little bit of intermediate. Uh, we're gonna spend some time this evening uh, doing a couple of little mini lectures. I'm gonna to try to keep the lecture to an hour, hour and a half, so that it'll give you time to work on your assignments. Uh, remember, I'm recording this, so it'll be posted in the announcement so you can watch it back later. Uh, I typically do a portrait and or a car illustration poster for week three and or four, your final project. So I figured I'd scratch the surface a little bit, talking about breaking down three-dimensional shapes in the two-dimensional space, kind of how I visualize things, how I use the fills, the strokes, the gradients, the gradient meshes, uh, the effects and the transparencies and opacities of objects. Uh, just to show you the technique that I use for digital illustration uh, that I think over the years has bowed me well as a, uh, uh, has uh, created some clean final illustrations, vector-based, fully scalable, uh, and as realistic as they can be for a 2D vector illustration. Uh, remembering that there are tools like Blender for 3D, and there's uh, you know Procreate with Photoshop uh, brushes to give you more shading and airbrushing and detailing and making things appear more realistic. But just remember those are raster-based solutions, not vector-based solutions. So we do wanna to try to produce as much as we can in a real-ish environment, even though we're in a two-dimensional plane and it's completely vector-based, which is what Illustrator is. If you uh, are on LinkedIn, which is like a professional app application where uh, companies look at employee profiles and you share business tools and tricks and trades. There's always in the graphic design lounge in LinkedIn, uh, uh, someone that's done uh, uh, an illustrator illustration. Maybe it's a Harley motorcycle or a car. Uh, sometimes it's portraits and people illustrations. Oftentimes though, it is metal based because doing gradients and layers and opacities and basic effects and creating objects over each other uh, are much cleaner and much more realistic when you're talking about a physical object than when you're talking about skin tone and wrinkles and details and things like that. But there are certainly things you can still do in an illustrator environment to create some really nice realistic illustrations. And if you've ever been in the lab, uh, we've got an illustration of Rihanna. We've got a bunch of people illustrations in here and there are some really beautiful ones. Just knowing that an illustrator, it's a layering environment where you're laying objects on top of each other and each object that you're layering may have a level of opacity change or transparency and textures and effects and gradients and basic brushes and blending. I mean, there's a lot going into the realism of an object in Illustrator. So just remember the announcement section, be taking a peek uh, just to make sure that my recordings are in there. If I post anything in there, whether it's a, a note as simple as that we're offering an English tutor now uh, from one of the professors here at the university or a request for your ideas for a quality enhancement plan for students from the university. I mean, I post all kinds of stuff in there. So make sure that you're actively engaged in the announcement section. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a hop down to our modules. So like I said, module one, I consider to be kind of our vector basics. Uh, module two starts to get into a little bit more of the vector intermediate. And this now we're overlapping into what I consider intermediate slash advanced illustration, digital illustration, scalable graphics. Uh, obviously the more you put into it, the more time, energy and practice, the better you're gonna get as you push from intermediate to advanced. But we definitely are sharing the tools now to get us over that hurdle into the more advanced situation. So remember it's chapters five, six, and seven, and we do have a topic share here. Uh, remember, just kind of trickle your projects as you get them done. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. I know it takes time to do some of these things. So uh, take your time, pace it out. I'm going to open up the book real quick, just to kind of highlight chapters five, six, and seven, 
just to make sure that we're on the same page as we're tackling some of our step-by-step -step stuff. Uh, so we're into, so let's go to chapter five. And I'm just gonna scroll down and it has some basic shaping uh, properties where it's showing you a clock for the ways to problem solve some of your Bezier curves and kind of how things curve. A simple little project, which brings us into this flame, kind of shows you this inverted shape, this clock, more practice. The pen tool is really the key here as you're generating vector or scalable graphics. If you're good at the pen tool, you're gonna to be able to hit home runs in this program. So practice, practice, practice. So chapter five really is just getting you into the understanding of the curve, working on it a little bit more in details, a little bit of this detailed coral work, kind of scrolling work, the flame, the torch. These are all little mini projects. They don't take long. Here's a reflected shape like we did uh, in a previous chapter, some basic scroll work. I want you to open it up and take a look at the layers, take a look at the red line, but it's gonna bring us down to this last project here, this skull project which is really beautifully done. This is the project you wanna concentrate on for your chapter fives. The other ones are just mini projects. The monkey's cute, uh, a couple of the others, the parrot's nice, but the skull is what I really want you to concentrate for chapter five. Chapter six brings us into a little bit more advanced. We're getting into some building layers and methods of layers. Uh, so this one, gives us some really a little bit more interesting real world. The red line work is already there for you in your Illustrator file, gives you the practice points, shows you the anchor points for smoothing, gives you the chance to sculpt this dragon. These are all two-dimensional icons, gets you really practicing in the two-dimensional icon world. You should be practicing those. You get the flowers here, you're going to start getting that Pathfinder and Ellipse tool where you're starting to overlap and cut things out. You're going to get a beautiful leaf here, kind of as we move through to get this really nice pattern going on. But the one I care most about for your chapter six is this little guy right here. It gets you into the gradients, the highlight, the meshing, the basic silhouetted shape of this guy. There's a couple other projects that mimic the same process. Some other icons, smoothing out of wings, kind of smoothing things out, some typography, pen tool, uh, merging pathfinder tool type of stuff. But the monkey is the really one that I'm most interested in. Gives you a chance to do the red line, reflect and merge. Some things we've done already in the past. This kind of fun clown image as you get a little bit further along here. Another beautiful illustration. This one's what I would consider moving us into the advanced. Open this up, take a look at the layers, dissect the parts of that one because it's gonna give you a really good professional application. The rest of these are pretty simple logo graphics. Nice to open up the icons, uh, but the monkey image, really important because you're kind of replicating that from scratch and the clown for breaking down the layers so you know what's going on. And then we'll take a look at the last one here. And this is just all about style. What fits what? These different logos are fitting different audiences that you're creating for. And it goes through the thumbnail process and talks about the simplicity of graphics and line work and logo types. These are all really beautiful. Kind of gives you the basic two-dimensional stuff. But then you get to the dog. And this is the one that I really want you to concentrate on because it starts to break things into layered shapes for you. And this is a really great book project anyway, because it shows you all the different applications for vector-based graphics. Look at these keyboard characters, love them. I think that's really great. Uh, another complex image, this kind of sun image. Eh, as long as you have the dog image, you're getting it. This is cool too, because it's getting you into logo work and textual typography and talking about spacing between elements, things not touching when you're doodling them, 
cool graphic, fun to fill in, change the color of him, play with him. He's a good final solution along with the guitarist that you can see here. Those two projects are great for breaking down the layers and exploring them. Go in there and individually direct select the shapes and manipulate them so you know kind of how they're constructed. Those projects are all, these last two really good for breaking apart the Illustrator file and taking a good look at it. The one that I like the most from a scratch build standpoint is the one up here, which is your little dog. So really try to render and play around with that one and see if you can get some realism. We're gonna work on that style with the car illustration tonight before I go over to the portrait illustration. So that tackles our books. Several simple little projects, a couple more, a little bit more involved in the step-by-step -step process. I'm hoping you're watching the lectures later and taking a look at the way I generate some of the elements and talk you through the rationale and the process of Illustrator so that we're kind of on the same page as you practice. Whether you're using your iPad and Apple Pencil and you're drawing the pen tool or the pencil or the paintbrush tool using a stylus or you're using the mouse, it's the same process of application. So as you're watching me and maybe you're following along, Make sure you're doing kind of this thinking through the same process I'm thinking through. Your book spends a lot of time talking about pencil to paper, thumbnail sketching, the concept behind on paper, how the designer thinks of shapes. And then when they go to Illustrator, how they build on those shapes, the book does a really good job of raw material to digital illustration. I'm trying to show you in digital illustration world, Adobe Illustrator, how to think about the things you would have done on paper first as you render your illustrations directly to an illustrator. So just kind of keep that in mind. Your book does a great job of paper to pencil first and giving you the red line and giving you the raw details of the image in Illustrator so you can see the artist's original intent. But the bottom line is we're using Illustrator to complete a professional two-dimensional illustration in a scalable environment that we can use across multiple applications as a real professional designer. So just kind of keep that in mind. I love the book. It's the reason I picked the book was because it does give you the thumbnail all the way through finished artwork process. Uh, but keep in mind, sometimes you're skipping the pencil to paper and you're going directly to Illustrator for both your outline sketches and also your finished fills. Okay, so that's that's enough of the intro for week three. Now we're gonna spend a few minutes just talking about, so I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna make it landscape, just a simple kind of letter size piece of paper. And I'm gonna take a truck image. I'm gonna drop this in. Uh, I'm kind of into these three, to, these uh, kind of eco-friendly electric solutions that are happening now out in the world uh, for uh, the green movement of cars. And so this is a company out of California called Canoe and they do uh, kind of very interesting. I'm gonna embed this image so I don't need the image on the desktop. They do these modular platforms. So this is one platform and they build a bunch of cars on the platform. Uh, and this is just their truck version. And they have a kind of an SUV version and they have a delivery truck version. It's all built on the same platform. The reason I chose this is because it's very angular and we can start taking a look at kind of the features of uh, automotive illustration, how it works, what it looks like uh, as we kind of break apart this thing. Cars are really easy. So you'll notice that I actually made a copy of the image and I put the 100% opacity image over there. And then I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna crank it down and use it as my template. So I'm gonna crank that down and use it as my template. I'm gonna go into layers. And we talked about this last week. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that layer so I can't touch and move this. And I actually can lock this layer too so that I don't touch and move that. But it allows me to zoom in. The first thing I'm gonna deal with is the outline of this thing. So you're gonna notice that I lightened it up so I can actually see the vehicle but the actual 100% is over here and you can kind of see the shapes of it. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna take my line art. I'm gonna use a white line to start out with just so that you can see the line on the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and curve this. I'm gonna do all the things 
we've done in the past to kind of get this thing the shape I want it. So I'm just gonna kind of curve this thing and I'm gonna come across, I'm gonna connect that, right? So there's my original window line. You're gonna notice that this line has an interior window line. So I'm gonna take my pen tool, I'm gonna to go in here and I'm gonna create this interior window shape. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna layer my objects and you can actually see my objects for the window in the 100% opacity, but you can't see them inside the 33% opacity. So I'm gonna select these two things. I'm going to find my Pathfinder tool. It doesn't look like I have it open. So I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna cut out that window. So I'm gonna hit this button right here, which is minus. So it's gonna cut it out. The reason I'm gonna cut it out is I'm gonna go in here with my eyedropper and sample the window. So now I have this thing, which is that beginning of the window and I have it traced out. So I'm gonna take this thing and I'm actually just gonna drag it over a little bit because you can see that it changes color here from a darker shade to a lighter shade. So I'm gonna take my gradient tool. I'm gonna to go into my color palette. So let's see here, I have my color palette here. I'm going to, I've got a bunch of things going on here. I've got my guide. I'm gonna pull a few of these things out so that I can apply my gradient here. And I wanna have my palette separated so you can kind of see them. And you're gonna notice that I have a darker shade to a lighter shade. So I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna continue to rotate this thing a little bit. And you're gonna notice it's darker there and it gets a little bit lighter here. So I'm gonna click on my swatch and then I'm gonna crank up my shade. And I'm just gonna start creating the essence of this thing. So I'm gonna take that, kind of shade it a little darker. And so I'm gonna start with just this being the essence where you're gonna notice there's some weird highlights happening here. So I'm gonna shade that and then I'm gonna get in here and I'm visualizing all of these shapes layered on top of each other as individual shapes. Now I was trying to explain that a little bit last week. So you can see now as I drag this thing over, and I'm gonna kind of take this thing and now that I have the gist of it there, I'm gonna bump it over. I have that shape applied now. Now you're gonna notice when I go in here, I gotta rotate this thing and I'm going to move it. So let's move this thing. We're gonna go into my color. I'm gonna darken that a little bit. And you're gonna notice I'm starting to create this thing going on here. And you're gonna notice it's lighter over here. And I can actually see a separation line and a little bit of a separation line. So I'm gonna go in here now and I'm gonna take my pen tool. I'm just gonna start creating some of the shapes that I'm visualizing in my reflected image. And I'm gonna switch it over to an outline so I can see my shape a little bit. And I'm just starting to create this window that has an ever so slightly different shade to it. So I'm starting to create the layers that I need inside this object. So let's go ahead now, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and I'm gonna take this object and I'll hold down shift. And I'm gonna drag it over into the placement of my copy. I'm gonna drop it in there. And so now you can start to see the image that I'm trying to replicate here. So I use my template, my opacity 30% as my template. And now you're gonna start seeing how I layer everything on top of it. So you're gonna notice that this thing has a little roundedness to it. And this is actually a full shape. So I'm gonna take this thing, I'm gonna curve it. 
I don't have to be 100% accurate because I'm actually gonna send this thing behind. So I'm gonna drag the hold down shift, kind of move this out of the way, use my eyedropper to sample that lighter shade. I'm gonna use my pen tool, my space bar, so I can select this thing and move it over. I'm just bringing this thing over. And so let's put it there for a second so I can select this and bring it to front. And I'm gonna drag this over and I'm gonna notice that this thing isn't perfect. So I'm gonna make sure that it's definitely behind all my elements, right? So I'm starting to layer this window. You can see it here and you're gonna notice I got a little issue here. And so the very first thing I'm doing is I'm just starting to generate the shapes that I need to generate for this design. So now you're gonna notice that my next issue is this thing, which is the interior pillar. And I'm working a little bit quickly with this so that I can get you to see the gist of what I'm generating here. Because I'm just starting to layer the objects. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna use my eyedropper and I'm gonna sample the darker shade. So now I can drag this over, click on this, hold down shift. And I'm going to select all of these objects minus that. And I'm gonna do object arrange, bring to front, which means this is my kind of a seat pillar I have going on here. So I gotta move this over just a skosh. Now you're gonna notice that it's got a little bit of alignment going on. So I'm gonna bump this up just a little bit to make sure that we are definitely past the pillar of the seat. And so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can start to see what I have going on here. I'm starting to generate these shapes for the window, but it's important because now I have to go in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this outer shape, the original shape. And I'm gonna direct select and delete that interior cutout. The reason I did that is because now I'm gonna go in with white. I'm just gonna do straight up white fill. I'm gonna take this thing, I'm gonna drop it over the top. I'm going to go into my properties and adjust my opacity and crank it way, way, way down to like uh, 4%. And so now when I delete, see how sharp it is? And I'm gonna put that slight tint on it. The reason I'm gonna put the tint on it is because I'm going to go in and I'm going to put, uh, there's a couple of different ones I like to do. Uh, so let's go into, let's go into grain. I'm gonna take the grain and I'm gonna crank up the intensity, crank up the contrast and let's go with regular just so that you can start to see the texture on this. So just to show you the differences, right? Soft contrasty, see how bold and bright it is, enlarged, stippled, which is one that I really love because when you do this, I'm gonna crank this down a little bit just so that you can get kind of the base, basic of it. I'm gonna crank up the intensity just a little bit. I'm gonna crick the grain. So now watch when I crank this up a little bit. See how it's starting to get that texture on it? And I can actually zoom in. I'm starting to get that texture on the image. I can actually see here that I have to smooth out my bend here a little bit. So let's smooth that out just a skosh. Just to make sure this thing is matching up. And so let's take this one. So I'm just matching this thing up to make sure that. I'm starting to get that shape 
going on there. So now that we zoom out a little bit, now that you can see that texture that's starting to happen, I can go in and crank this down just a skosh, just to start to get it. And so let me zoom in again so you can see the texture that I'm starting to create in the image. I'm starting to replicate this texture, this ghosted texture that's on there. So you can start to see the pixelation that's happening. I can also go in now and if I wanted to, I could take this shape. So I'm gonna copy and paste it again. And this time I'm gonna take the shape I'm going to go into the uh, grain and I'm going to remove that. I'm going to crank this thing back up so you can see it. But now I'm going to take my, so let's minimize that for a second. I'm going to apply a gradient to it. And in the gradient, I'm going to crank it back to white. And then I'm going to go over here and shade this just a skosh into darkness. And I'm gonna move this shape over the top of all the other shapes I have. And I'm gonna really crank down the opacity. So I'm just gonna keep going down with the opacity. So let's take that, crank it down. So I get this, I'm gonna crank this opacity back up so you can see the effect. And this is a layering technique in order to really start to generate the shades that I want in this. So now if I pick this and I move it out of the way, you can still see my textures in here. So maybe I wanna crank the textures down a little bit, right? Just enough to give it that effect. And so now let's pan over and I'm just gonna do a few shapes so you can start to get the idea. The next one's gonna be this one, but look at the pinstriping in this window. Like I'm a detail guy. So I actually would more than likely go in here and zoom in and take my rectangle tool and add that pinstripe in black, take my gradient, select this, make it black and then get into, so let me minimize that for a second, get into, My gradient, just tweak that ever so slightly so you can start to see the fade of my stripe. And I'll also notice that in my original, so I'm gonna pan back over here, in my original, you're gonna see this stripe that goes across there and goes through the windowsill. So let me pan back over here. And so I need this and then I need my pen tool and I start right about here. I'm gonna do that, I switch it over. Remember inside of our stroke, Let's round it off. Let's, well, we could probably keep it at one because, so let's do this. Just like that. And so now I'm zooming out a little bit and you can start to see the detail that I'm adding to my outline to start creating this detail. And you'll notice in this particular car, there's lots of outlining going on. So I would get in here and you can start to see the effect that I'm creating where I'm starting to get the striping. I'm starting to get the pin striping, the gradients, the opacity overlays, the te textures, all of the things that happen here. And I would actually probably bump up the saturation on this after I started building all of my panels here, just to darken it up a little bit. Because some elements of this, I think, need to be a little bit darker so I can start to see them there. So see how it's a light shade here? I actually think that I need to start to darken this thing just a skosh to start to get it to reflect 
what I have in my original image, but it's a process. It's piecing all of this together, darkening it where I need to, lightening it where I need to. I could put another layer on top of here just to show you. And what if I just made it black? And so you can see, so let's get in here, just flush this thing in black and drop it on top. Now I'm starting to get either a darker tint to this here and go back into, so let's move this out of the way and we'll move the gradient out of the way for a minute, get into my properties, make sure that my swatch is there, get into my percentages and crank it down a skosh. And so now you can really start to see the details that are happening in this window. And this, I think actually, if I zoom in, I actually think, so I've got a few fills going on here, right? Of all of my different shapes. I actually think that background shape could be lightened up a little bit in order to get the effect, the true effect that I want in the separation there. But it's seeing everything in shapes and blocks. Cars are really easy because they are shapes and blocks. And then you just start layering your effects to over and over and over again, different opacities, different gradients, different blends, all the way through different textures. And you start to get this really photorealistic car. But it can be tons of shapes. I mean, I've put a couple of hundred into just panels on cars in order to get that layered effect that I want. Remembering that in the end, I'm saving this as a press quality PDF, but keeping the editing capability of the illustrator shapes. That way, if a sign company or t-shirt company has to come in and see the layers and the objects, they can go in and manipulate the things that they need to manipulate in order to make it come to life. And also remember that all of these shapes are individual. So now if I go in here and lock, each one of these, right? I could go into the layer that I wanted to go in and I can lighten this thing up. So now you can see the detail in the window. I'm gonna move this out of the way for a minute and just zoom out. And now you can start to see this shape coming to life over here. And it's visualizing things in pieces and components and kind of how the shapes work. So if I lock that and unlock this, maybe I want this to be some level of dark. So let's make this really dark. Let's bring this other shape in. So let's get into, let's minimize this. Get into my gradients here. So I think this shape, I mean, technically, it's a little bit more like this, that back pillar. So let's do that. Let's rotate this a bit. Let's take a look at the properties of this thing. Let's make sure that each property has the right gist. And so now you can start to see there's a slight taper to that shape. And I'm starting to mimic this shape with this shape. It's a process, it's layering, it's understanding what effects apply what effects. I actually got a little bit of a sunburst or something going on there that I probably would apply a, a lens flare to in order to get that shine happening here. This is a lens flare, it's the reflection of the glass, I could slowly get in there and start building each of my elements and shining them up. Some illustrators cheat, they finish up that layered vector file, they import it as a smart object into Photoshop, and then they start adding more raster based effects to get that glare or that shine that they want. But I think you can do it in Illustrator if you're patient and you layer and you create uh, a detailed cutout shape of the panels and the shapes inside of your car illustration. So that kind of gives you an idea. I wanted to cover a little bit of that because 
sometimes I like to introduce the final as an automotive car illustration. Not sure on that yet. I'm gonna see how you guys do with your individual illustrations, your hot dog illustrations, some of the things we have building up, but it might be a detailed car illustration in the end. Uh, and that could eat up 16 hours of work, 20 hours of work. I mean, it takes time to build all the panels, depending on how uh, detailed a car you select, how many panels the car has, and how many shapes are contrast. How many are black, how many are a lighter color, uh, and how that shading has to evolve. So. Let's go in and close that. I just wanted to do a quick little 20 minute demo just to kind of talk about the car a little bit before we get into the portrait. So now I'm gonna move this. Let's put this, I'm gonna tuck back the properties for a minute. I'm gonna drop color in down here. I'm gonna drop Pathfinder down in here. I'm gonna drop swatches down in there. So you're seeing them all in the bottom of my palettes. I like to keep everything together that I use a lot and that'll kind of help me in the process. Because I want to spend a little time talking about gradient meshes, right? So I'm just going to take a simple shape. I'm going to stretch this out and I'm going to remove the stroke from it. And I'm going to fill it with just basic skin tone. And let's go into this and uh, let's, uh, man, that's a decent color. It's fine the way it is. I could get in here and lighten it up a skosh, just to give me some foundational element skin tones to work with. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever used this tool before, but the gradient mesh tool, but you're gonna notice thing, this thing as a shape. And if I click on the edge of the shape, it's gonna give me kind of this column and row structure. So I'm gonna go in here and traditionally cheeks, kind of have this tapered style to them. And so, and I can add any ones I need as I go, as I create kind of the essence of this mesh. And you can actually already see what's going on here, right? I've got my cheekbones. I've got the center structure, which might be my nose or potentially my mouth area down here but I'm just starting to highlight this thing because you're gonna notice that it no longer has a fill of that skin tone quality that I have. And I'm gonna open up this because I can go into now and I'm gonna direct select some of my shapes. I'm gonna direct select them and I'm gonna zoom in because you're gonna notice as I direct select them and I apply a darker shade to the edge of this thing that it starts to create a halo or a haze effect. And so I'm just gonna select a few and deselect. So you can start to see this thing happening. So you can see them. So you'll notice that I missed one. And so you can start to see the dark shadowing haze that's happening inside the image. Conversely, there are areas where it should be and so I'm just going to crank it just a skosh. So you're going to see I'm going to go 70% just because it's an easy number. You see the 70%, oh, I don't wanna drag it. You can see the cheekbones. So very subtly, see how I'm starting to layer and build my gradient mesh to have highlights. So let's just say, I'm gonna do this just so that you can see, let's say this was a forehead, 34%. So let's get back in here. Uh, let's get back in here. Let's soften this a little bit, just so that you get the idea. You 
see how I'm adding shapes to sculpt this thing as I click on it. I'm adding additional dark shapes. So let's deselect this for a minute, just so that you can start to see the blending, the blurring, the textures. And remember from my previous lecture, I also do these shapes, all right? So I'm just gonna sculpt this a little bit. And I'm just gonna do an abstract shape just so that you get the idea. I'm gonna change the properties of this, crank it down. Right, there it is. I'm gonna do my effects and I'm gonna do a basic blur to it, right? So you can start seeing it. And if I crank it down a little bit, you're gonna see more of it. If I crank it up a little bit, you're gonna see less of it. So right here it is, very slight shaded blur. I crank up the opacity, you're gonna see more of it. So there it is. So you see the brow that I sculpted, I just did a basic shape. If I rotate it and I move it down, it could be cheekbone shapes and my nose would highlight here. So I'm just zooming out for a minute. So you can start to see the gradient mesh, the color shading that you do in the gradient mesh and then the blur blend that you do on top of it. Gosh, it's starting to look like the Pringles guy, uh, which I didn't want it to do. But let's go ahead and delete this because I want to go out and get an image off of the internet. So let's go in and do file new window, uh, right? We did Edgar Allan Poe is what we were talking about before. Uh, something to know about Edgar Allan Poe. Let's take a look at some of the different, you know, now look at this image, how detailed it is. And look at the little bags under the lines, the lightness of the forehead. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this image over to the desktop. So it looks like it's just called Edgar One. Let's minimize this for a minute. And I'm gonna pinch in this. Let's see if we can find Edgar One. Here he is right here. This is a super high contrast. Looks like a wax image or something. But the beauty about this image, I'm gonna do Shift Option, scale it down just a skosh. Here he is. Remember, I'm gonna embed him so I don't need the image anymore. And I'm gonna drag this image over so I have a copy of it. I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit just so I can get the basic gist of this guy. And so now you're gonna see the highlights, the shadowing, everything of his forehead and that it goes into the hair a little bit here. And so what I like to do is I like to break this thing into shapes, visual shapes I can see. So traditionally it's like, let's go into roughly, because you can see the separation here of his cheekbone, right? That his cheekbone starting to do something there. So I'm gonna go in here and remember that his hair is gonna cover up some of this. So I'm gonna go in and start getting the basic gist of this guy's face. Right. And I'm just creating the basic shape of this guy's face because you're going to notice. And this takes layers. So just keep in mind that I'm going to do the beginning of the first set of layers here. Let's create that. I actually think I'm gonna, originally I was gonna do his cheekbone, but I think I'm actually gonna sculpt his head in here. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. So I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna drag it over because you're gonna notice. So I'm gonna deselect because I need to get some of these shades into my swatches. So let's do this I'm gonna open up the swatch library I'm gonna use my eyedropper. I'm gonna pick some of the light skin tones. So I'm gonna drop that in. I'm gonna select this one. That's a little darker. I'm gonna drop that in. I'm gonna see if I can find all the different shades. 
So you can see them right here. So you see light, medium, and dark. See all those shades there? And that's how I'm gonna start the replication of his face. Knowing his eyebrows, these are all individual pen strokes to create the hairs. And then you're gonna see a lighter shape here and a darker shape here. It's kind of like making a Xerox copy of a color image and then starting to tweak with that. Once you make a black and white or grayscale copy of something, you start to get, so that you see all the shapes. So now I have to start figuring out where I want shapes to drop in. So you see how um, you can see that line right there. So that's why I made this line. I can see another line over here that curves. Let's see if I can find the brow, which is right there. I have another brow which is right there. And then you can see some of the shadowing that's gonna happen along the edge of his face. So I'm just dropping some in. And remember, I can always add them later. So let's get in here and add. So let's select this whole thing. Let's add some light color. So that's the beginning of our image here, right? So then you can start to see if I direct select, you see these cheeks right here? If I go in and add the slightly darker shade. So let's zoom in. Because you can actually see, do you see that shade right there? I'm gonna make it darker so that you can truly, but see how dark that gets if I make it super dark? I'm trying to create a middle tone shade for you so that you can see that his skin has this little bit of a shade here. And the other side has a shade in his brow. And we also have these lines here. These would be individual pen tool lines. And this is kind of a texturized, I would make this a white highlight that I blur out and I make it pixelated or granular so that it gets that crackle technique. And you'll see all these little mini like kind of birthmarks freckles. These are individual shapes that I would put some texture in. But look, you see this brow here? It's darker right there. So I've got to generate a shape that I can get his brow. So I see a darker shade there. So let's add a couple of them. I'm using the lighter shade so that you can see the subtleness of that darkening. But for the sake of the recording, I'm going to darken some of this up so that you can truly see the darker shade that is his brow. Now I'm going to go back in because I want to add a stripe here and I want to lighten it back up. So see how if I do that, I can actually remove the darker shade from the middle of his brow. So now if I zoom back over, that's this dark shadow right here. I made it super dark so that you could see the darkness of it, but watch if I go in here and I select this and I go into my palette and I lighten it. So I'm gonna crank them all the way down. So you can start to see the lightness of that shade. So here it is right here, right? But it's very subtle. It's more like this shade, but for the sake of the lecture, so you can truly see it, because see if I make it just this shade. So there's the body shade, there's the darkness. So let's go in here and I'm actually going to crank it up like 5%. And then let's go into the swatches. I'm gonna take this and drop it on the edge right there. So you can see there's a subtle gradient right there, but watch what happens if I click on it and I soften it. You can see it, it's right here. I don't know how well you could see it on the actual recording with the desktop share, but there is a subtle blend right there to begin his forehead, which is right there which is this thing right here. And you're gonna notice it's over on the other side too. So over here, there's some of this 
going on. And so now you can see it. So if I drop another mesh in the middle and take it back to the light color, I can start to override that blend. I can start to override the blend right here. So you can see it. So now I get rid of that, take it back to the light, trying to lighten it up. So you can start to see, you can see it right there. See, I'm starting to lighten it up and I'm starting to build in essence, the texture of his forehead, knowing that it's dark over here, right? So this little shape right here that I've been cutting out is actually this color. You see, I can start darkening that, which is this. And keep in mind that if I do, let's go in and do, uh, let's do a very light crackle, just so you can see it. See that? So now if I crank down the spacing, I'm gonna soften this up like big time. You can see the swirl right here. See the swirl that's happening there? Let's take this up to one. I'm gonna click okay, just so that you can get the idea of the texture of this thing. That I have, and you can start to see the shading and the blending that's going on. Let's zoom out. I'm starting to create the texture that is this guy's forehead. Now, knowing that, look at the hair. So I'm just going to start replicating different pieces and bouncing around this thing. I really need to take his forehead all the way to this brow line. So I really need to generate that blend that I have going up here all the way down. So let's just take a look at it real quick. I'm gonna to try to just bounce down a few. So you can see that brow right there. So you can see that I'm blending it down and I've got to blend it down on this side too. I'm trying to take it all the way down to his brow line, which is right about here. So let me just deselect for a minute. So you can start to see me bringing this texture down and I probably should bring this up. So you can see I'm starting to shade the edge of his forehead there. So starting to bring his brow down, which is this line. I'm starting to bring this shading down which is darker. So this would wrap all the way down if I was generating this. And keeping in mind that see where his brow is lighter, which is down towards the middle here. So let me find that point down towards the middle here. Let's get into here. It's hard to see it without getting in here. And doing quite a lightening of it. So there it is. So you can see it right there. This shade. I'm going to make it super light so you definitely can see it. And I'm actually going to copy the RGB number just so that you can see it right there. So there's the beginning of his highlight. So now if I go in here, I'm going to add a couple just so that you could see the lightening of his brow there, which is what this is right here. And you'll notice in the very middle, which is this one. So I'm gonna get in here and really lighten it up. So now you can see it really light there. So I'm creating this layer technique of darker shades on the edge, medium tone shades kind of in the creases 
and fading to a lighter. I know it's hard to see when it's that versus this, but hopefully you can start to see the shading that's taking face across the front of his brow. Because remember, the eyes are going to get dropped in there. We're going to start layering objects, but you can truly see the beginning of that shape, the beginning of his brow cup here, and the beginning of the shining that's happening on here. But you're also going to notice this little tiny indent there. So just for the sake of the process, I'm going to take this and I'm going to create this shape. And it's darker. So I'm going to use one of my darker palettes. So let's zoom out for a second. I'm going to take this. Remember, I'm holding down shift. So I'm just going to try to drop it kind of where it would be in the middle. So you see it right there. And now I'm going to take the shape and I'm going to change the opacity. I'm going to crank this down, right? Because we know it's a light shape. So first off, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do an ever so slight blur of it. So now you could start to see that shape here. Now I noticed that it actually, when you zoom out, is elongated. I'm gonna take my direct select. I'm gonna select these two things. I'm gonna nudge it down just a skosh. So now you can see that indent is right here. So now let's just start doing Let's do, gosh, there are so many seams and everything here. I could start doing lines and changing the opacity on those and changing the thickness and start tapering the things around his nose because there are so many kind of interesting shapes. This is a wax figurine. So it's got, I believe it's a wax figurine. It's got super high contrast style of elements going on here. But look at this eyebrow. I mean, there's a distinct shape, right? The eyebrow is right here. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna curve it here because there is a shape. So I'm gonna start with the overall shape of this thing. Here's the overall shape, right? So let's take that and drop that in. Let's minimize that for a minute. I'm gonna take this and drop that in there. And I'm gonna drop this one in here. And so this is kind of how my brain works. So for me, it's not hard to visualize the introduction of shapes here. And so I'm gonna do a very slight, you can actually see it. See how it's darkening around the edges there? And so then I have all of these little brush hairs and strokes. I've got a change in color here that I'm going to need to overlay. But it gives us a starting point for his brow, which is right there. It gives us a starting point. So now that I have it over there, I can start lightening this thing up. So I, what I do is I start to do these shaded areas just to get the general shape of it. And then I start layering on top. So I know that this thing is there. And so I'm gonna switch it over and just for the sake of the process. There's the first copy and paste. 
And I'm just gonna replicate this thing over and over again so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna start layering these things. So now let me just take the three that I have created. And I'm gonna move them over so you can kind of see what they look like. And these are layered shapes, right? Layered shapes. So I'm just bringing these in. I'm just for the sake of the process, I'm gonna drop it in kind of right here so you can see what is going on. So now watch what happens. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna take these three things. I like to round them off. So if I minimize this for a second, go into my stroke palette, round the tips off, then go into my properties, crank them down a little bit. And you can see how this thing is starting to layer itself. And so now let's select these three things. I'm gonna group them and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a very, very, very slight blur. about maybe one. So now you can start to see, if I zoom out, you can start to see the darkness that's happening over there. See this darkness right here? That's what I'm replicating here. But I need to do about 10 hairs going this way, about 10 or 15 going this way to truly darken it. So let's get in here. I'm gonna take this. And just for the sake of the process, I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna reflect it, click OK. And I'm just gonna replicate this over and over again because you know that that's a really easy way. So let's squish that, I'm gonna rotate it. So now you can start to see that darkness. So I'm gonna take this, duplicate it, stack it on top of it. And so now when I zoom out, you're gonna to start to see that darkness happening. And that darkness is this right here. And I would layer all the dark ones here and then start layering lighter ones here. And I can really start to get the essence of that. But watch, watch when I zoom in here. And I'm just trying to sculpt some of the things for you so you can get a real good idea. So you see this brow, eye wrinkle. I don't have the exact measurements going on right now, but let's just give that so you can see. I'm gonna soften it up just a skosh. So here's the beginning of it. So let me deselect it so you can see it right there. And then you can see it right here. It's a lighter blur on the outside, a darker blur on the inside. So what we'll do is we'll, let's make a copy of it. Copy and paste it. Let's soften this thing up a little bit. So here it is. So I'm gonna zoom it in. So you're just seeing the layering technique that I'm doing. I've got my mesh working. I'm gonna expand this out a little bit. And the reason I did that was then it'll give me a chance to take this piece, park it right on top, and I'm gonna make it smaller. So watch what happens. I shrink this thing down. So there's the taper, but for the sake of the visual, because I'm having trouble seeing how much of it you can see on the projector and the shared screen. And so here is that shape. So there it is. So let's expand it out a little further so you can truly see it. just making it bigger. So you can see it in the shade. So now you can see the lighter and the darker, which is mimicking the lighter and the darker here, which then I put this crease here 
and you can start to see the shaping of the nose. So if I move that away, you could see the shaping of the nose right there. And I would just start cranking away on this thing. And you can see it. The beauty is you can always use the eyedropper. So like for the eyes, I would go in here and grab that blue. And then I would grab the darker blue, right? The light blue and the darker blue. And look at this thing. Now, I like to kind of micro manage the process here. So you can see it's lighter and darker. So let's get into, so let's do this. We'll minimize this for a second. We'll select that and we'll take the lighter blue. And let's drop the lighter blue here. And you can really see. So let's see what we have going on here. We have shades of lighter blue and darker blue. So let's really lighten this thing up a little bit because this pupil has like that lightness inside of it. And so then let's take our pen tool. I love doing this, going in here. And let's do this. Take the eyedropper. So let's zoom in because I really want to get that really light color, which is like right about there. I can actually see it. So now let's do this. I'm starting to sculpt his eye here. So let's go down to two. Let's crank it down just a skosh. So you can start to see me blending it. All right, so I'm just gonna click that for a second so I can zoom in and show you the blur on it. Now, when you zoom out, you can start to see this highlight. You see that pin striping in there? I would make vertical lines. It's going to get darker in here, right? Because we have to do the secondary circle, which is a darker color. So when we take this and let's go into our, so let's minimize some of these things. Get back in here. Make sure that we have this thing selected. Not the stroke. We want the fill. So you can see that, right? And then you take this, drop the darker in there. And so shift option. start to see that thing taking shape. Now this is important because this highlight actually has to be brought to front so you can really see the beginning of that highlight. And it actually, if I zoom really tight in, copy paste, I need to make this like 0.5. That. 100%, trash the blur. The object range, bring to front. Let's make this lighter. Let's do that. And then let's do a very slight blur on this, like super soft. So you could see it right there. Let's do like 0.3. Now, if I zoom out, I'm starting to create 
this thing right here of his eyeball. Now, I like to do all that little interior shading too, which is slightly off white. And this is white, but you can see the detail, the red to the burgundy. So it's deep burgundy to a red color, to a pink, to a deep red. And that's a shape all by itself inside of the eyeball. And it's easy because you can see the basic pupil and everything. And when you zoom out, you can really start to get the details of his eye. So let's do this. Now, keeping in mind, I'm just trying to drop some of the elements in here to get the basic beginning of this guy's face going on. And then I need the shape of his eyeball. I need the white in there. I gotta start getting these tapered skin tones, but you can start seeing the forehead sculpting. You can start seeing the eyebrows sculpting. So I start with shades first. And my very last thing I add is this line work, which is solid strokes of line that are super thin. So I start with the shading first, and then I kind of take it from there. And you can see the dark shadowing. I mean, the areas that have dark shadows, you can see the hair area here that has the gray to light shade. So with the hair, I would start with the shape, right? You can see the shape right there. So you see that? And then I need to sample the hair, deselect, sample the hair up here, which is a slightly darker shade. And this is all tapered. So you see how that's a little V? and a line there. I really, I'm doing silhouetted shapes for you so that you can see the process, but I like to break all these things down into really simple, simple, basic shapes. So let's get in there just for the sake of the process. I'm gonna drop that in there. And then I'm gonna take a darker shade and drop it in there. And so you can start seeing that shape. I need to do all this detailed work here in order to really highlight it. But just for the sake of the process, I'm gonna drop it in there. I'm gonna lighten it a little bit so that you can start get the blending of the hair. And then I gotta go in and do each one of these shapes. So when I zoom in, you see these shapes. So this is a shape, this is a shape, this tiny little dark shade is a shape. This is a shape. And then I would start fanning out the hairs, which is right here, so just for the sake of the process, just so that you can see. So you see that this thing, if I zoom out and I bring this over, that hair, oh, is going like right there. If I zoom in, there's the beginning of the first hair, which is that hair right there. And it's shapes, it's strokes, it's line work, it's layering. But when I zoom in, when you have a high contrast image that I can see all of the individual shapes. You see this little shape right here, which is a lighter gray, this shape, this shape, this shape, a little shape here, a shape here, a shape here. So you can see the darknesses. They start in black and they lighten up. And each one of these shapes with a very slight blur to it would start to layer in the hair. You can really see it here, light brown, light gray, dark gray, black. You could even get away with a really dark blue right here. I like to do it where I have a full color image 
a template image to drop on top of, and then all of the layering of the images I can put on top of it. So it really gives us the effect that we're looking for, one shape at a time. But if I go in here now, and let me just get rid of, just see, so I don't want you to get distracted by all the little individual shapes I've started to create. So what if I even just get rid of the brow? That. I'm just getting it back to the general shading shapes. I'm gonna get rid of some of these details I was doing to show you the process for the shading. But look at the beginning of the nose, the dimple in between the eyes, the shading of the forehead, the highlighting of the forehead right here. So I'm starting to create those shaded gradient mesh details. Of course, the bags under the eyes would be a shape. This highlight would be its own shape. And this is like crescent moon stacked on top of each other with a slight different fill and stroke, a slight different gradient, and a blur, a very subtle blur to start building these eye sockets. So we'll see how this layering happens on the face as you start to build layers. Uh, it's a practice. It's seeing things as background to foreground, general overall shapes, all the way down to detailed shapes. If you use your eyedropper to sample out of the image, you get these beautiful color swatches that, that you can then use for your layering, for your detailing, for all of your work. This hair alone, I would create as one layer, one mini shape at a time, and then I can drag it and drop it right on top of the face. The face, I start with the overall face, which is what I did with this shape. And then I would layer on top of it individual shapes. Like you see this cheekbone right here? This is an individual shape that I would do a gradient mesh on to highlight it because it's a little bit red, it looks like. This shape right here from a distance is a little bit red. And remember, you can add textures by pixelating this thing. So all these little freckles and everything, other than this simple one single freckle or this single one blemish on the forehead here can be surface textures. And then you just apply those shapes. Look at these little individual hairs. I start with a full shape. I soften that shape to block it in. And then I layer on top of it the individual shape. So I do the general silhouette. I make the opacity softer so that I can get the darkness as an underground layer. Then I blur the edges of it so I can layer the hairs on top of it to really punch it forward. But you could spend easily 30 hours sculpting the face and the hair of this portrait in order to lay all these individual shapes. Look at this little tiny shape right here. This is a slightly darker shade. So if I was building it, I would make that a shape, increase it too. See how I started it up here, but truly it's actually this thing. So let's see. I take it and move it up here. The beauty about this is you can replicate these shapes over and over again if they're similar. But man, I could, I could spend all day on this. So you're starting to see that crease right there. See it? It's a little seam right there. And if I zoom in, and maybe I change the opacity on this and crank it down so you can only just barely see it. So that crease right there is starting to be this crease. Now I would continue this shading because remember I made the mesh right here in order to make it darker here. So this would sit on top of the mesh I'm starting to create over there, which would be shaded similar to this, just a little bit darker in this section. And you can actually see it, see all these points right here. That's the section I would start to darken and this shape would sit on top of it. 
and it's layers and layers and dropping many shapes on top of other shapes. And you start to create this really dramatic thing. You, you could see it right here. If all I did was go in here with my direct select and start picking some of these other shapes, I just wanna pick them so that you can see them. So you could see it right there. So if I keep selecting these shapes and making them darker, so you could see that brow that I was creating. So you can start to see that shading that I'm creating with that brow. That's a little dramatic. It's darker than I need it to be because it's a slightly darker shade, not as drastic as this darkness is. But I try to do dramatic in the lecture so you can definitely see the difference. So I just soften that up by clicking on the color and changing the range of the color. Do you see this? It starts to become a little more gray in its shading, which you can see right there. I left the one spot darker so you can see it. And so, and it's just layering and layering and shading and starting with a foundational skin tone that has a gradient mesh that has highlights and darks and then creating shapes on top of them that have the different tones that you need them to have in order to blend the nose and everything to build the portrait the way I want it. And you'll see some spectacular ones. If you go in and do illustration portraits or illustrator portraits, you'll get some just really realistic versions of the gradient mesh technique of what we're doing here. So it's just about eight o'clock. I wanted to keep it to an hour and a half, hour, hour and a half to give you the layering technique that I wanted to show you. Keep in mind that we're gonna be using gradient, gradient message shapes, this blur and opacity changes in these overlays for next week's final project. So keep working on your book projects, keep pushing along. Let's see how you do with the hot dog. Let's see how you do with your basic illustrations in the book. And then we'll have one illustration that will be your final project next week. It'll be an open lab. Just work on your assignment. I'll turn it on Sunday night, Monday morning and give you all week to work on it. So we can really see how well you've done with the pen tool, the understanding of uh, the Pathfinder tool, cutting shapes out, blending opacities, doing all the things that you need to do in order to build uh, a detailed digital illustration. I wanna go ahead and stop the desktop share in the recording here in a second. Uh, keep working on your projects. It's eight o'clock, you have time. If you put aside time, spend the next hour or so, it's open lab working on some of your projects. I'd like to see a flow of a few more projects coming into Canvas so that we're not bringing them and pushing them all through at the very last moment. So keep working hard. Can't wait to see how well you get with the pen tool, with shading, with blurring, opacity transparencies, uh, things like crackle and grain to give texture. And we're gonna see how far we can push this digital illustration technique. So uh, everyone have a good night. Let's keep working hard. We got a week and a half left or so. Let's see what you can do.